Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. In this video, uh, probably in an odd sense, the longest uh, runtime up between researching a topic and filming about it, I am going to present something I presented at the uh, Studies in the History of English Language conference at the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia in 2006 <laughs> when I was a uh, graduate student at the University of Georgia. This is about the two words for fate that we read in Beowulf and elsewhere in Old English poetry, weird and method. And in um, my graduate studies, I thought that I had identified and interesting patterns different between how these words are used. And um, 17 years later, I don't think that it's necessarily um, still well acknowledged widely what the difference between these two words for fate is in Beowulf. They often both just get translated as fate. So I just want to present about this because I've been talking about it occasionally with people lately, especially because of the ongoing, although slowly progressing, uh, series in which Simon Roper and I are reading Beowulf in the original on our channels. Uh, I just thought some people might, might be interested in this because, uh, again, it has come up a few times. So, yeah, here is a, <laughs> a conference paper from 2006. Potentially, I'll even share some slides from 2006 with you because that's what I'm reading off. Alright, so we have these two words, weird and method. Weird occurs more often in more contexts, that just flew over me, uh, in prose and poetry. Uh, method occurs less often in fewer contexts, I think generally in poetry. Weird occurs in glosses, glossing some Latin words like force, chance, fortuna, fortune, eventus, the outcome, fatum, fate, and fate in just about all the contexts in which you would mean fate in English. Fateful utterance, decree of fate, an individual's fate, the force of fate, etc. And then it also glosses sortem conditionem, allotment and circumstances. So weird is fortune, it's chance, it's also the outcome of fortune. Very much kind of all the meanings you could give to fate or chance or fortune in English. All right. Now, in the poem Beowulf, which is going to be the main source I'm going to talk about here, Beowulf and other characters and the narrator will often place his trust in God. All right here we see, There you live on Sheol, Drechnes Dome, Sethe Hina Death, Nemeth. There the one death takes shall trust in the judgment of God. But he doesn't have the same trust in weird. On send Hialaka Yivmek Hil Nemeth. Beo the screw that bets that mina breost wereth, hrae la sailest, that is hradlan love, whale on does your work, gath all weird swahio shell. Send to Higalak if war takes me, the best of mail coats which my breast wears, best of vestments, it is Rethel's heirloom, Wayland's handiwork, weird goes ever how it must. Not can be trusted, not uh, it judges one way or another but it will just go as it, as it must, as it will. It seems much less personal than method. But method pretty clearly seems to actually generally be roughly synonymous with God. That was ildem kuth that he ne moste tha method nolde se shun shatha under shale du bregdan. It was known to men that the demon foe might not draw them under shades when the allotter did not wish it. Method e lamweld guminakinis swahe nu yit de the allotter ruled all mankind as he now still does. Fader on latid that is so with method, the father loosens. That is the true allotter. Methodus hirudo, the allotter's race. Swilchwasteo hira hathenra hicht 
Ella Yamundon in Mode Seven met her here Nakuzon, there the Damon, the Wiston here Drift and God, a here Huru Hevon a Helm Herion, Nakuzon, Wildress Walden. Such was their custom, the solace of heathens. They remembered hell in heart. They knew not the allotter, the judge of deeds. They knew not the Lord God, nor had they even heard tell of the heavenly protector, the ruler of the world. Here we have numerous names for God, judge, Lord, ruler, protector, and Method just seems to be thrown in there as one of them. Who says Method? Typically the narrator, otherwise Beowulf. I think there was all of the quotes from Beowulf in there. Uh, but also Hrothgar one time when he says, Thassig meota de thank, etchi and richna, thass the itch on aldre yabad. Thank the allotter, the eternal Lord, for this man's victory, which I prayed for in old age. Again, thanking Method, weird is never thanked, making it roughly synonymous with God, it parallels drichna, even eternal drichna, eternal Lord, all in the, all, uh, all the, recipients of thanks there in the dative. Now there is a passage here that has often been translated to make weird and method look the same, like they're the same thing, like they both perhaps refer to God or to an impersonal fate of the one. Nelle ich berg is weird overflay on fotestrem, ak unk further shale weir than at wela, swa unk weird detail, method mana yahwas. I will not flee from the hill's guard a foot's length, but it shall moreover happen among us too at the wall as weird apportions to us the allotter of all men. However, that's reading weird as a nominative, which it doesn't have to be at all. Weird looks the same in nominative and accusative, and I think it makes more sense to see it as accusative there as the object of what method, which is a person, God, is doing. I will not flee from the hill's guard a foot's length, but it shall moreover happen among us two at the wall as the allotter of all men apportions weird to us. This makes a lot more sense to me, uh, having seen that method is a personal force, generally synonymous with God, and weird isn't. It makes sense that in the Christian worldview of the Beowulf poet, that God has power over everything, even weird, although weird operates sometimes independently of God too. Um, probably not in the Christian conception because it has to because God is powerless over it, but because God chooses to let it take its course as he allows the devil to exist and other things like that. We can see that weird is sometimes actually kind of evil. My analogy with the devil being somewhat, um, somewhat on point. Is mean flet wero the we he up yawano the he a weird for sway up on grendless grira. God eath a may thona do share than dada yatwaba. My hall guard, my war heap is diminished. Weird swept them into the terror of Grindel. God can easily stop that the spoiler's deeds. Once again, Weird is operating, doing bad things outside of God's command. It's doing it without God's command to do those bad things. However, God, being omnipotent, can choose to stop Weird if he wants to, but he works in mysterious ways and he didn't there and he might not other times either. We also see, for example, Nevna him witsi god weird for stoda on thus manas mode had not wise god and beowulf spirit prevented that weird for them so god and even good men such as beowulf can stand in opposition to weird it is not synonymous with god's will all right I'll come back to talk a little bit more about this <laughs> talk i came in 2006 uh, after a quick word from my friends and partners at grimfrost uh, in the usual way it's kind of funny looking at these old slides, seeing how I translated Beowulf back then. I, I used such a more pretentious English than I would use by the time that I wrote uh, my translation of the Poetic Edda um, in 2013 to 15, uh, or even more pretentious English than I was using writing things in 2011-12. Anyway, it's just fun. it's a blast from the past for me. All right, so what are the origins of these words? 
weird. It goes back to an Indo-European root where to the turn. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure why this was included in this presentation, but uh, it's worth noting that method, uh, which I did not put an origin slide for in this presentation, goes back to the same uh, root as meat, like meat out. So it's like the measurer, the one that allots, measures out, meets out. Hence my translation of it as the allotter in most of these quotations. Um, as I mentioned, Weird can be bad. Thu ert and alav usus kinis wag mundiga ela weird for swear up mina magas to metal shafta ero las on elma itch him after shale. You are the last remnant of our kin. God, I would never write thou art the last <laughs> decade and a half. You are the last remnant of our kin of the wag mundings. Weird swept all my kinsmen to the allotted fate. Men with courage, I shall go after them. But it can be good. Right? It's it's neutral. It's it's and in, in normal person terms and in D&D terms, it's a very neutral force. Huru, weird, ye shreaf, that heswa, ye lea full, on swa, lea goda, in world riche, weirdon, shelda, krista, ye quema. At last, weird allotted that he should become so believing and so dear to God in the worldly kingdom, may it please Christ. Weird, of nered, in fact, ne erl, thona his elende, one of my favorite, favorite uh, Beowulf quotes. Weird often saves an undoomed man when his courage holds. I will note, often, not always, but God also acts with respect to the undoomed man, the unfey man. Swa me unfege ea the ye digan weon on the rex eve, se te waldendes hildo ye hildo. So the undespairing easily survive woe and misery when the ruler's favor holds. So the idea of an undoomed man holds not only with respect to weird, the more neutral force, but also God, the positive force. But weird is much more indifferent and weaker than God or method. Weird ne mechte in fagum laying feor ye hilden, deo refretwe thon him ye damed. Wow, so this comes from Guthlock, not from Beowulf. Weird was not able to hold life that dear treasure in the doomed longer than was allotted to them. That's a different word for allotment. Uh, it's deem. Uh, from the, the dome root, the judgment root. Uh, this is from the sea favor. Theathe he ne wille firis fulne otha on bale for bernende his yawachne wine weird be the sweetre meo to the mechtigre on a angus monis ye hugged. Although he wills not his established friend to be full of fire or burnt on pale, weird is stronger, the allotter mightier than any man's thought. So both are stronger. Just again, notice they're they're not equated. They're not the same thing. Weird is powerful, and God is powerful. Back to Beowulf. Hemwas yeomur seva wabra und walfus weird un yemeta nech sithona gamelen beets on shelda sekian saula hord sunder yedalan leave with liche nothon langa was fer atalingas flasher be wounden. He had a troubled mind, unstable and despairing, weird and measurably near, which should greet the old, seek the soul's hoard, put asunder life and limb. Not for long was the noble's life wound with flesh. This is a conception of weird that's compatible with, with a conception of the Christian God, just as people who may have a strong personal belief in, in the Judeo-Christian God or a similar monotheistic God's day, might talk about fate or fortune or chance or luck while still not believing that that impersonal force is stronger than or equal to God, right? It is possible to sort of acknowledge both at the same time. There are hints of that earlier personal conception of weird, not really in Beowulf, maybe a little bit in the poem Guthlock as here. Ellen bid selas tham the oftal shale treogan drichten beilu Courage is best for him who most often shall endure lordly bale, think deeply through dire separation from his lord when the time comes, woven on weird staffs, maybe. Of course, 17 years later, I'm a lot more used to seeing that stav, data plural stavum, stolvum, used in Old Norse is just an extension of a word. So maybe this really should just be seen as woven by weird, kind of ignoring the stav, it's just a metrical extension there. 
but it could be woven on weird staffs or by weird staffs, in which case you might get a little bit more of a sense of the personal Urther goddess-like figure that we read about in Old Norse. And I have a few more videos about uh, Urther and the Norse conception of fate on this channel that I have about Old English stuff, so look for those if you're still watching here. So really, in conclusion, I think the Old English poet of Beowulf and of Guthlock and the Seafair, etc., they didn't confuse Method with Weird. Method was the name of God, and Weird is a separate, impersonal force that acts separately, but it's subject to God's veto, just like everything is in a faithful Christian worldview. So God can be trusted, but maybe not Weird. Remember, Weird often saves an undoomed man, whereas God can be relied on by the undoomed man. But that dooming is probably still the work, the intention of the Christian God. So a little bit of a uh, blast from the past there, but uh, I hope still something of interest to those of you who've taken an interest in Old English or Old Norse and related subjects. Uh, we'll see uh, as this year progresses with the Old Norse class that I'm offering on Zoom, probably becoming my main job for the next few months, what's going to happen to my update schedule with videos. It's possible that I will back off of this uh, requisite twice a week updating schedule as we go forward. It doesn't seem to necessarily uh, boost views or anything to post as much as I do. So maybe I'll, I'll back off of that and stop believing that someday some meteor of, a, of a attention or money, you know, fame or fortune is going to fall on this channel, which seems uh, unlikely after all this time. <laughs> But I think the Old Norse class is an interesting experiment. I'm looking forward to that with uh, those of you who have decided to come do that with me. And if it's a success, of course, I'll be offering that Old Norse class again and possibly an advanced class in the future too. For now, from beautiful Wyoming, where it is just barely above zero degrees, I'm wishing you all the best.